Okay, now we want to tin some rail. Now, as you can see, I took my little grinder and I ground out spots for the points. So that's what you should be doing, or have already done, by file, by whatever means you got, and get down near where the points are going to close, make sure you get, you know, into the rail, so that when the points are closed, it kind of like completes the rail. But what we need to do is we need to do some tinning. And I've already tinned the long pieces. I'm going to show you how we're going to tin the short pieces. And before we do that, we need to rough them up. It works best if you rough them up, and I'll tell you what, it makes life a lot easier if you do that first. Now, I got some 400 grit sandpaper here, and I can take a rail, and I can sand it. Okay? That will work just fine. It's hard work, but you can do that. Remember, we're doing this assuming that you have, like, nothing for tools but if you got a moto tool and you got a flapper wheel that works even better I'm gonna rough this up it gets hot these big nuts work great as heat sinks too that one's rough that one's rough let's go ahead and rough this down I like them nice and rough, scratchy. That's the way they should be. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and we'll do it like this. In fact, we'll just do two at a time. I'm gonna take that, put that on there. Take my little screwdriver here, get some acid. Some people say don't solder with flux, just use rosin corp solder no no that's no we're using acid paste flux you will never see me solder stuff without using flux always for wires and hookups and stuff use rosin for mechanical stuff this is considered mechanical it's got to have physical strength to it we're gonna use acid the stuff I told you never to use, this is when we're going to use it. I've got some, I've got some different solder today. Um, this is some 6040. It does have a rosin core to it. Some Kester. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it other than I... Oh no, 6644. Okay, my usual stuff, 6040. This stuff is a little softer. And it um, doesn't require as much heat to get it to work. And I'm going to try it on the whole switch. I've never used it on a whole switch. In fact, I've used it for hardly anything. But we're going to try it. I think this stuff is ultimately stronger than my electrical. Than my super fine solder. It's, and it's way cheaper too. It's cheaper and it's easier to get. And we're going to try it. I bet it's going to work just great. And I like the fact that it doesn't take so much heat. Because on cold 100, sometimes you really got to heat it. And I, if you've seen some of my older soldering stuff, I have the big 250 watt. And I have used that. I have used the big 80 watt chisel. And I want to use some stuff that melts at a little, just a little bit lower. A little less heat. And... When we're joining these to rails, where that's going to make a difference, it's going to grab underneath much faster. If you heat, if you heat the rail too much, you will um, you can damage the PC board tie. It can start to peel up, and that we do not want. There. Now I've got my rails tinned. And that's, that is the way I want them. 
That's how I want to be ready for laying down some ties and starting to assemble this thing. See, is everybody? Oh, we gotta do this guy. Gotta do that guy. Let's get those guys. These are gonna be the points that I can go ahead and I can tin them now if I want to. Don't have to, but I will. As long as we're doing some tinning. I'm still gonna have to grind them so that they fit and they make my my point. Notice I'm at the ed I'm at the edge of the workbench here. Makes it a little easier to come in from a low angle. My workbench top is unfinished top particle board. My workbenches have been that way for like I don't know how many workbenches I built, probably five or six, and they've always I've always used this stuff, and I like it, and it um, stands up to all these different you know, chemicals and burns and you name it. It is my go-to workbench. I do not like finished top workbenches at all. Which is the desk behind me has a finished top, and I do not use that for doing stuff like this. When I'm sitting there, I usually have got a cutting mat down if I'm working on something. And I don't want to use a cutting mat to do this soldering. I just get them end to end. It isn't all needed, but that's the way I do it. It just is that way, then I don't have to worry about finding spots and stuff like that. It's just all going to be tinned, just like that. And now, we're going to start laying out some ties. And we're going to start putting some rails together. <laughs> 